standing ovation from the fans in attendance. The events of September 11 will be forever etched in the minds of everyone in this country. And tonight is part of the healing process. Baseball returns to New York for the first time since September 11. the fans in the cheer of Rudy. Bobby has spent so much time in helping put packages together, working here at Shea last week as it was part of the staging area for the search and rescue operations. And Bobby Valentine has been touched as much as anyone by what has taken place at September 11. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Laughlin. Thanks for joining us tonight on Fox Sports Net. Tonight, the Mets organization will pay tribute not only to the victims of the terrorist attack on the World Trade Centers, but also the heroes who have been so tireless in their efforts in the search and rescue movement in southern Manhattan as they battle against hope and against time to find some survivors among the 6,000 that are missing. Those signs tell of the organizations involved in that effort. John Franco, the native New Yorker, has, uh, has been somber throughout. The Mets will be wearing those caps tonight as they have the last two games to honor those heroes. We spoke with some Mets, including Glendon Rush, about the feel, the emotion of tonight. I think it's going to be a whole different feeling tonight uh, than it was in Pittsburgh coming back. It's going to be an emotional night for everybody and uh, hopefully a good night to where uh, everybody can enjoy themselves a little bit and um, obviously remember uh, what's going on in our lives and uh, maybe give everybody a chance to smile and have a little fun. It's kind of a little hard, you know, you own, you own the city and you own the, when every, everything started and, uh, and you just... Like I say, I don't start thinking about that. You just try to go out there and play hard for, for three or four hours. And, and uh, you know, after the game, you just go back to the news and, and see what's going on uh, around the world. And, and uh, you know, like I say, hopefully uh, people here tonight, they come and, and, and uh, destroy our mind for, for just a little while and, and you know, just uh, have a little distraction, you know. What about the emotions, though? What did you feel? Well, I haven't felt much yet, but... Uh... I'm sure it's going to be there and, you know, we're going to have a lot of tributes and people coming out and singing and a lot of uh, families that were inflicted uh, with this tragedy. So I think that's just something that flows when it happens. And no one knows exactly how they will feel as the ceremonies unfold here, the moment of silence, the color guard from the various emergency services, the police department, the fire department marching on the field. Uh, Again, the mayor uh, has been so instrumental in, in helping to move the healing of process along as slow as it may be. Todd Zeal uh, has been touched by the events. We all have, let's face it. Uh, it. It was a tragedy of enormous proportions, and in one way or another, everyone across this great land has been affected by what took place 10 days ago. Baseball did come back to action on Monday, but as we go upstairs to you, Howie Rose, it's back in New York for the first time, and considering what took place 10 days ago in Manhattan, that makes it a special night. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Now, the Mets have a scoreboard skyline that did include the Twin Towers. The World Trade Center has now been blacked out, and there is ribbon around that area. The rest of the skyline, though, illuminated here on the scoreboard at Shea Stadium. Huge American flag filling the video screen and the scoreboard here at Shea Stadium. Normally, the Mets logos are on the field uh, near first and third base. Instead, the red, white, and blue ribbons have been put on the field. As we have seen in baseball, uh, since the sport resumed, the American flag has been placed, the sticker of the flag has been placed on all bases. On top of the dugouts, there have been changes also. American flag has been placed there. The visitor's dugout 
was changed from welcome to Shea Stadium to welcome to New York City with a pair of flags surrounding that. And meanwhile, the Mets dugout was changed from the saying which said 2,000 National League champions to God bless America along with two flags. And the Braves obviously also touched by this tragedy paying tribute to the New York Police Department. That is Steve Carsey, who was born in Flushing, went to Christ the King High School in Queens, and he comes back for the first time. We come together for the first regular season professional sporting event in New York City since Tuesday, September 11th. We return to our national pastime, in part to show that America can and will go on. But before we begin our game, we will pause to remember the victims of those terrible attacks, their families, and the thousands of rescue workers, volunteers, and good Samaritans who have shown that America can be at her best in the most difficult of times. Our colors tonight are being presented by a joint color guard consisting of New York's police department, fire department, emergency medical service, Port Authority Police, and the New York State Port Officers Association five agencies that lost rescue personnel when the World Trade Center towers collapsed. Pipers, and a rifle team from the United States Marine Corps 6th Communication Battalion, based in Brooklyn, New York. America is Miss Diana Ross. Miss Ross is accompanied by the North Fort High School Choir and the Christ Tabernacle Choir from Brooklyn.
by the Northport High School Choir and the Christ Tabernacle Choir of Brooklyn. In center field, we welcome 34 midshipmen of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, Long Island, who are presenting the giant U.S. flag for tonight's ceremony. Now let's welcome center field. Our groups representing many of the brave, committed men and women who've been working long, difficult hours as part of the rescue efforts going on at the World Trade Center. Please welcome members of the NYPD, New York Fire Department, Port Authority Police Department, New York State Court Officers, the San Francisco Fire Department Station 1, National Disaster Medical System, Demore. New York Hospital in Queens. St. John's Queens Hospital. Mary Immaculate Hospital, EMS Division. And New York University Downtown Hospital. These rescue workers are joining the big shipment around the giant flag in the same way that Americans from all walks of life have come together to help in the wake of these tragic events. Please remain standing for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, which was written by Francis Scott Key 187 years ago today. Our national anthem will be performed tonight by Mark Anthony. dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled
such a national disaster. And now the recouping of our country and getting back to where we were. And getting back right now to what is at hand, it's the most important game the New York Mets have to play in this season. Well, the crowd seems pretty well prepared for baseball. I'm not sure that mentally everyone here might have felt that way even Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday watching, but right now the Mets start play just five and a half games out of first place. And so Bobby Cox, the manager of the Atlanta Braves, presents this starting lineup. It's brought to you by Bud. That's Marcus Giles, the rookie second baseman, followed by Julio Franco, the returning veteran. And then Chipper Jones, Brian Jordan, Ken Caminiti, Andrew Jones, Javi Lopez, Ray Sanchez, and Jason Marquis from Staten Island. Ironically enough, the starting pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, and that's the batting order that will go after Bruce Chin, a former Brave. And Bruce comes in with a record of three and one for the New York Mets, and he has the weight of a big season on his shoulders. Get some Marlins. He had four walks and two hits. Not a good uh, outing on September 8th. He has a wonderful pickup move. The best on our staff, and we're about set to go with Bruce Chen starting the ball game for the New York Mets. And notably, Chen and everyone else connected with the New York Mets in terms of uniform personnel are wearing those caps that pay tribute, in Chen's case, to the fire department or the police department or the Port Authority police. And there's an interesting story brewing behind that as well as Giles takes ball one from Bruce Chen and that is that the Mets would like to continue to wear these caps for the rest of the season. Now Major League Baseball mandates that uniforms and all caps and accessories conform to strict requirements and so they've needed to receive special permission to wear these caps permission that we are told is scheduled to be discontinued after tonight. But there are some defiant people in that Mets dugout who say that no matter what Major League Baseball or MLB properties might say they want to wear those caps for the remainder of the season so it'll be interesting to see what results. Two balls and one strike to Marcus Giles and Chen misses with a slider down and in three balls and one strike. Giles the 53rd round pick of the Braves back in 1996 but he's hit the big leagues this year and has had a very productive go of it. That's off the glove of Piazza for ball four. And Giles might not have realized it at first takes his time getting down to first base but the walk gives the Braves a lead off base runner. It'll bring up Julio Franco the Mets defensively brought to you by New York Lotto features zeal at first with Alfonso at second the third baseman Robin Ventura. And at shortstop, Ray Ordonez. In the outfield, Tsuyoshi Shinjo is in left, with Jay Payton in center. And around in right, it's Matt Lawton. So here's Julio Franco taking on the inside corner for strike one. Really a difficult thing is to look at Tudo Franco, a former Met. He retired from baseball, went down to Mexico and played, and was brought back to the Major Leagues by Atlanta. The emotion of this night has got to be extremely difficult on a player like Bruce Chin. He is not a veteran, he's new to the Mets, and so he has to overcome that. And apart from the circumstances surrounding this game, it's just the challenge of Chin facing his former teammates as he slips the fastball past Franco to go 0 and 2. The only start that Chen has made this year against Atlanta came while with the Philadelphia Phillies and that did not go well. In fact it was his last start as a Philadelphia Philly. He went two innings and gave up seven hits and seven runs. He's trying to prove something to his former team. He's ahead of Julio Franco who stays alive. A dominating batter for the Cleveland Indians and then acquired by the Mets and never could quite put it all together. He had some injuries while with the Mets. Was happy to be in New York, his home area. And then out of baseball and played in Mexico. Had a great year in Mexico this year and brought back to the majors by the Braves. 
Takes a big cut there to Julio Franco, who last had played in the major leagues with just one game. One at bat for Tampa Bay two years ago. But Franco had also played for the same team that Bobby Valentine managed in Japan. The Chibalotti team back in 1995. Took off. He's doubled up, and there are two out. Nobody on. Well, the ball not hit hard, and a perfect setup for a double play. Good play by Zeal, and an easy out for the double play. Well, the first sign that things are starting to return to normal. Chipper Jones hearing it from the fans. That he fouls the first pitch back. No fouls, one strike to Chipper. Another big year for Jones. 36 homers, 94 runs batted in. Jones now playing left field for the Braves. Their entire infield right now is different from where it was at the beginning of the year. Breaking ball, 0 and 2. Chipper Jones has hit 300 against the Mets in each of his last six seasons. 326 this season, 395 last year, 499, 356 and 98, 370 and 97, and 408 and 96. He has been the toughest batter for the Mets over that period of time. That's just a little more than a half season, 86 games. If you prorate those numbers, they come out to be something very special. Chipper on a 12 game hitting streak. Uh, Bruce Chan ahead of him in the count with two out. Nobody on just getting started at Shea. Behind the fastball. He has hit well against left hand pitching. He's hit 348 with six home runs. He's hit better in the home run department against right hand pitching. So he is a better and stronger hitter from the left hand side of the plate. Breaking ball. Count two balls and two strikes. Braves come in having salvaged the final game of the series that they played with the Phillies last night at Veterans Stadium. They lost the first three, inviting the Phillies to stay right on their heels. Philadelphia starts play tonight just a game and a half behind Bobby Cox and the Atlanta Braves. The Mets are five and a half back, six in the loss column. And that will run the count full. Phillies have the better of the schedule. Down through the remaining games. Atlanta has six games with the Mets. And the Phillies have the easier way to the National League Eastern side. Yeah, they've got games left against Florida. And they're 10 and 2 against the Marlins. So a payoff pitch on the way from Chin. So after the leadoff walk, the line drive double play, and then Chipper Jones in right field. Followed by Edgardo Alfonso at second. The Mets batting order brought to you by Ford. And then Piazza, Ventura, Shinjo, Zeal, Peyton, Ordonez, and Chen. And now Jason Marquis out of Tottenville High School in Staten Island. Ralph. And a record of three and eight. Earned run average of 4.24. CBS. And the Nissan scouting report. He was born in Manhasset. Good fastball in the mid 90s, hard slider, a change up, and he's had the worst run support of any pitcher in the major leagues. Yeah, how bad? Just 2.8 runs per game that he started, this being his 14th start of the year. No other pitcher in Major League Baseball has had less runs scored for him than he has. And the fastball tipped by Lawton to count 0 and 2. For Jason Marquis, the emotions have to be running awfully high tonight as well, because one of the firefighters missing in the World Trade Center attack, Michael Camarada, was a teammate of Jason Marquis on the South Shore Little League team, which played in the 1991 Little League World Series. It was a difficult night for Jason Marquis in particular. That's line to left. Chipper Jones hesitated before coming on to make the catch. Another thing about Jason is the fact he played in a championship game here at Shea Stadium. But he grew up as a Yankee fan. 
Well, obviously nobody in this ballpark is holding that against him tonight. Not with the reception that Mayor Giuliani received. 1995 and 1996, Marquis pitched Tottenville High of Staten Island to two straight New York City championships. So Alfonso back in business after the injured finger. One ball, no strikes to Fonzi. And his batting average creeping up to a more respectable 248. Well, one thing that looks pretty apparent, Ralph, is that his bat, his swings seem to be virtually pain free now. He's swinging much better, of course, has hit well in the last month of the year. And had to set out a few games with a bad finger, and that did bother him a bit. But he's uh, got the good swing back. Could you tell almost by looking at his swing the difference between when the back was hurting and well, when it's no not? No question about it. You could tell because he was moving so early in the in the pits on the way count. And uh, he now is staying back and uh, hitting the ball like he did his good years with the Mets. Very encouraging sign because Fonzie, of course, will have several months to rest that back and get it as close to 100 percent as possible before next spring training. Uh, they were at one point wondering whether or not Alfonso would be able to finish this season. Two balls and a strike with Piazza waiting on deck. On the outside corner, good pitch by Marquis. It's two and two. Alfonso didn't like that call at all. Wally Bell is the home plate umpire. So on the count even to Alfonso. And he hits it out to right field. Should be easy for Brian Jordan. And that's the second out. So a couple of fly balls against Marquis here in the first. And now Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza. Well, you know, Mike's all right after a season which has also been punctuated with various nicks and bruises. Another one hand home run in Pittsburgh earlier in the week. Two home runs in that series, and one of them turned the game around to the Mets' favor. And Mike has really become a New Yorker, even though he was raised and born in Jersey, New Jersey. He has been the spokesman for the Mets throughout this catastrophe. And he does live fairly close to the site in Lower Manhattan. Two balls, no strikes to Piazza. Many of the Mets, including Piazza, have visited the site, visited with various agencies and representatives of those who have been affected by the attack, pounded foul. In fact, just yesterday, Bobby Valentine, John Franco, Al Leiter, Todd Zeal, Robin Ventura, John Stearns and Mets PR director Jay Horowitz all went downtown without any fanfare or attention. No cameras were around. Put the hard hats on. They went right deep into the site at ground zero. As you would imagine, each man in talking to them today very profoundly affected by the scene. How could you not be? John's son plays Little League for a coach. Apparently has been lost in the attack. Full count now to Piazza. But I will say, Ralph, that in talking to players and just being around the scene today, there seems to be some semblance of an upswing in the general mood and demeanor of the players from what it appeared to be in Pittsburgh earlier in the week. The time does heal all wounds, and it's going to take a long time, but. Gradually you see the reaction getting better all the time. Breaking ball and a fair ball. The outside his way to second as Chipper Jones makes the slow approach. And Piazza stands at second with his 23rd two base hit of the year. <laughs> Marquis didn't want to throw him a 3 2 fastball, and he still got burned. Right down the line and by Caminetti, and not played too well by Jones. And Piazza able to get a two base hit out of that hard drive ball. Of course, 
Jones is playing in the outfield. Basically, it was a shortstop and then moved to third base. Amenity, who was acquired by the Braves in the latter part of the season, taking over th third base. Jones going to, to the outfield. Ventura going after the first pitch. No balls, one strike to Robin. The one hit that he had in Pittsburgh was a home run. Ventura with a off year. And he is an important cog to this ball club. 20 home runs. 55 runs but then hitting at 230. He's a backup man to Piazza. Exactly a thousand ribbies for Robin Ventura. 1001 waiting at second base. 0 and 2. One of the things about the way the winner of the division is determined is that if you played only the teams and kind of the games in your division the Mets would be in first place. The Phillies would be in second and the Braves would be in third. But the games played against the clubs in your own division like they do in football. Got him. So Marquis with a fastball strikes out Robin Ventura. And the Mets are done in the first. A two out double by Piazza, who stranded at second, one of the books. No score. What did tribute mean to you, and what did you think it meant to those in New York and, and the area? It meant uh, great recognition for our police officers, our firefighters, our EMS workers, our Port Authority police, every, everyone. Uh, I know how much it means to them. And I, I particularly wanted to be here because I thought what the Mets did the other night in wearing our hats. It was just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It uplifted the spirits of thousands of people who were working at the site at a time in which they absolutely needed to have their spirits uplifted. And I just thought it was one of the most beautiful human things I had seen. Well, and this uh, entire uh, tribute and what the Mets have done all week long has been very heartfelt. I know Wally Bell, the home plate umpire, came over to you <laughs> after the first batter, Marcus Giles, was up and, and gave you a baseball. What was that all about? He said, please give it to somebody that, uh, that where it would be important. And I said we're going to give it to one of the one of the children at the family center who's lost who's lost their father, and we'll find someone. We'll get the Mets. I'm sure to sign it. Well, well, very, very well. Again, a very nice gesture by Wally Bell, and of course, you will make sure that that gets done. This might be the loudest amount of cheers you have received at Shea Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I told Peter Malone before that things will be back to normal when they boo me at Shea Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a Yankee fan, you know, and they all know it and they give me I usually when I walk in here They start yelling things like go back to the Bronx go back to the Bronx I happen to root for the Mets in the National League I'm rooting for them big time although I did go over and shake hands with everybody from the Atlanta Braves I mean that one of the thing one of the points that I think we want to make is that America is together 1,000 percent together Atlanta New York every place <laughs> Now we get out on the baseball field and we're going to beat it. <laughs> well, that's the way it should be between the lines of the Mets looking for a victory. Do you think they can pull off this improbable, I'm some playing. say impossible dream? I'm absolutely praying. I told I told uh, Bobby Valentine that and I, I told uh, Jeff Wilpon that and this would be an absolutely wonderful thing uh, if they if they can do it. Uh, but to the mere fact that we're back and we're having baseball and we have so many people in the stands and this is the way life gets back. To, uh, to normalcy, I mean, and, and they have to. People have to enjoy the parts of life that are, that are good. You, you can't concentrate just on the, on the tragedies. Uh, w without a doubt, life does move on uh, in an unbelievably trying time. And speaking to some of the players, some of the fans, they're not concerned clearly by their attendance here. Well, the players had to be here, but the, the fans' attendance here by security concerns. Anything extraordinary that had to be done? I mean, the city is so used to handling so many situations, uh, perhaps greater than this. Anything? We, we, we take extraordinary precautions now about everything. So if there's a gathering, we have more police. We do more surveillance. We do more looking. It's just natural in the wake of a tragedy like that. We do, do it whether it's here or it's a church service or, or a synagogue service. So yeah, there was a little extra. There will there will be probably for some time. Uh, but but it's so wonderful that these people in such large numbers have the confidence to come out and it, it's a dem this will encourage other people now to go out and do the things they should do. All right, uh, two quick things. One, I should point out that Council President Peter Vallone is a few seats away, and I apologize. A loyal Met fan. <laughs> <laughs> a loyal I Met from him last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps he can win one from you uh, in what would be an unbelievable subway series. The final question for me, sir, is what 
if people still want to do something, what do you tell them? What I tell them to do, if they have special expertise, they should volunteer and uh, volunteer at the Family Center, volunteer at the Javits Center if they, if they, if they, can, uh, if they can help, if they have expertise in the area. But uh, if, they, if there's nothing else they can do, in addition to maybe making a donation to one of the charities, like the Twin Towers charity or the charities that will get money directly to the families, they can just go about their lives. I mean, go back out to restaurants, go to stores, go to movies, go to plays, do... Go, go back out there and lead your life because it says to the terrorist cowards who attacked us, they're not going to stop us. We're going to mourn and we're going to feel grief, but we're going to lead our lives. They're not going to stop a democracy. Well, Mr. Mayor, you've given so much of your time. So many people want some of your time. I appreciate your giving some of it to us. This is the national pastime. It means a lot. And I think we probably learned that when they went back uh, the other night and everybody was wearing the cap. It had an electrifying effect. Well, for everyone in Thank New you. York and in the area, congratulations, congratulations to the Mets. Their, their extraordinary humanity and generosity is very much appreciated. Well, Mr. Mayor, you have done a yeoman's job. Uh, Rudy Giuliani here at Shea Stadium. We will take a short break. We'll come back with the bottom half of the second inning. Scoreless between Atlanta and the Mets. Just about everyone in this ballpark wearing some agency's heart on its sleeve tonight. As this game is scoreless with Shinjo Zeal and Peyton set to face Jason Marquis for the Atlanta Braves. And that's on the outside corner, nothing in one. Shinjo, 273, 10 homers, 51 runs batted in. No balls, two strikes to Siyoshi Shinjo. He went five out of ten in Pittsburgh. Ralph as this season has progressed here we are in September and Shinjo is still getting key hits and driving in runs and apparently having made some pretty good adjustments. One of the things that he had to adjust to was this disaster right here in this country. One of the things about the Japanese players and there are two regular players from Japan in Major League Baseball. They do not go to any endorsing Functions. Breaking ball got him there. And that's the second strikeout for Jason Marquis. For what reason I don't do not know. Well, each pitcher off to a pretty good start. New York Marriott Marquis pitching matchup features the work of Jason Marquis and Bruce Chen. That's had the only hit in the ball game. Franco at first and Todd Zeal is gone. One pitch and the second out recorded. Two out, nobody on, and Jay Payton will be next. Well, Zeal took a soft line Same. drive and turned it into a double play, and right here, this ball hit like a bullet. A good play by Franco, basically, is a second baseman or an infielder. I guess you call a first baseman an infielder, but uh, not really a first baseman. And as Franco hit the ball that Zeal caught for that double play, but Jay Payton steps in now for the Mets. Right, Ralph, this Atlanta infield totally revamped from the one that opened against the Mets at Turner Field back in April. All the way around, first, second, short, and third. Oh, and one to Jay. Gilvio Veras was released. He was the second baseman. Rafael Furcal, a tremendous young shortstop. Season ending injury. Fouled away, 0 and 2. Unless Bobby Cox, the manager of the Braves, wins 15 of his next 16 ball games, it will be the worst record that the Braves have had under Bobby Cox. And he has had a fantastic record. He did a nice job with the Blue Jays in the American League as well. 
The only manager in Major League history with a 10 consecutive season of 580 percent or better was Casey Stengel and Bobby Cox right behind him. Take and go around. No, according to the first base up Marty Foster, it's two and two. The other thing about Bobby Cox is that he leads the league in being thrown out of games this year. Yeah. Been thrown out ten times. A couple of nights in Philadelphia this week. Matt Corrales had the lineup card in his hand very early last night. Here's Pat Corrales, former big league catcher. And hey. manager. He got fired with his team in first place one year. That's when things are tough. Count even to Peyton. Two out, nobody on. Hit well to center. Andrew Jones with room. Side retired. Three up, three down for the Mets in the second. And at the end of two, here at Shea, Atlanta and the Mets remain scoreless. So many people want to do so much to help, and so let's give you some phone numbers and locations where you can help make donations. National Disaster Relief Fund at 1-800-HELP-NOW. Of course, the website at the top, www.LibertyUnites.org. The New York State World Trade Center Relief Fund, 1-800-801-8092. And the United Way September 11th Fund, either 212 251 4035 or 1-800-710-8002. And I'm sure we'll be able to get that up at some point later in the game in case you didn't have the pencil and paper handy. But Ralph, this is a pretty poignant sight. This is atop the scoreboard where the Mets have long featured the entire skyline, including the World Trade Center. And that has been, at least for the time being, memorialized as such. A nice gesture. Javi Lopez takes a strike. Nothing and two to the Braves catcher. He'll be followed by Ray Sanchez and Jason Marquis. Will he be the Braves catcher next year? Javi Lopez could become a free agent. Late and foul down the right field line. Still nothing and two. 1995, Javi Lopez hit 315, the first Brave catcher that hit over 300. Since George Torrey, who hit 3 for 15 in 1966. They can be pretty sure he won't catch tomorrow with Maddox pitching. Still 0 2. Paul Paco has been pretty much Maddox's personal catcher this year, which really is to say that anybody but Javi Lopez over the years has been Maddox's personal catcher. Not comfortable pitching to him. Still nothing in two. Third ball fouled off in a row by Lopez. And that one caught a piece of Piazza. Other catchers stay in baseball by being a personalized catcher. Ray Sanchez waiting on deck. Chin will throw that fastball up and sometimes out of the strike zone. Right there, he picks up the strikeout just that way. Third strikeout, and all three have been in high fastballs. He does not throw that hard, but he throws you that slop drop, and that sets up fastball, which is not really too much into the possibly not even in the 90s. So Ray Sanchez picked up from Kansas City to play shortstop. First call went down with the injury. One ball, no strikes to Sanchez. He's been around with the Cubs, the Yankees, the Giants, and the Royals. And that's hit through the hole. So Sanchez delivers the first Atlanta hit. And the Braves with a one out base runner, Jason Marquis, in all likelihood, will try and butt him over. 
Glenn Hubbard, somewhat familiar face, former brave second baseman, now the first base coach. It's interesting, Ralph, as emotional as the crowd was during the ceremonies and during the first inning, things have quieted down quite a bit. Unusual for a Shea Stadium crowd. One ball, no strikes, particularly with the Braves here, particularly with this game having such significance relative to the pennant race. But circumstances have dictated that people are reacting at their own pace. And Tura coming in hard from third. And the fastball misses, so it's 2 and 0 on the pitcher, Jason Marquis. The one thing you want here, you want to make sure you do get it out. You want them better to bunt. Certainly don't want to walk. That's a strike. Two balls and one strike on Marquis. And again, the corners, Ventura and third, Zeal at first, for coming hard. Zeal has been going to the mound and talking to. Cruz Chin on every pitch. Yes, Keith Hernandez taught him well, huh? Mm -hmm. This time, Zeal had to reach. This is new to Bruce Chin. He has not had the uh, games uh, where the Mets play this play all the time on left hand pitching. They have the first baseman off the back, and there is a signal. Where he goes back to the back when he does go there. It's done on a signal, not by chance. That's low and it's three and one. That time Zeal had taken a step back towards the bag and then dashed down the line. But now it's three balls and a strike on Jason Marquis. Marquis, not a good hitter. And you would think three and one, the butt would still be on. Maybe the take shot. Yep. You got a left hand pitcher. Marquis does bunt, but it goes foul. He's got another crack. It's three and two. Now the question here is whether or not the runner would be going with the pitch. Three and two count. The other question is whether or not he will swing away or will he bunt again, attempt to bunt. Marquis with a full swing fouls it back. And that time, Sanchez was not running from first base. Gets caught between first and second. Zeal late getting the throw to second. Zeal thought the runner was coming back to first base. Sanchez had started down the line and then stopped. And so Zeal, evidently hearing that he was going to come back to the bag, takes the ball to the bag. Right here, you look at Zeal. He's thinking that the runner is coming back to first and loses the chance to get the runner trapped off first. So, in order, the sacrifice was done by the strikeout. Well, sacrifice means give yourself up. I guess they don't care how you do it. Jason Marquis, though, will not get credit for his sacrifice, but Sanchez does steal second base. So he's in scoring position, and now Mark is Giles. One and oh. And Mike Piazza is going to have a word with Bruce Chen. I want to remind you about a scheduling change as far as the television schedule is concerned. Tomorrow's game, which was originally scheduled to be seen here on Fox Sportsnet, has been changed to the WB Channel 11 and so we will next join you on Fox Sports next Sunday afternoon 
for the final game of this three game series. Matt Lachlan will start it with Geico Mets on deck at 1230. And then a little after one o'clock Al Leiter will throw the first pitch. He'll face Tommy Glavitt. Greg Maddox and Steve Traxel tomorrow night. One and oh to Giles with Sanchez at second. Chen now with four strikeouts. And he's one and one to Giles. Sanchez, not much speed at second base. And Chen misses upstairs with a fastball. It's two and one. for Lawton in right field. And the side retired. So the Braves leave a runner in scoring position. No runs a hit one left middle. Of the There's our score bottom of the third. There are three other games underway in the National League on our office depot scoreboard. They got a good one going down in Philadelphia. Colorado is leading Montreal. Cardinals with an early one to nothing lead over Pittsburgh. Everything else coming up a little bit later on. And low scoring games, the order of the day when you switch over to the American League. And speaking of switching over, switch over to MLB.com for the most complete baseball coverage on the internet. Well, here is Ray Ordonez leading off the bottom of the third. As Don told you earlier, he has been swinging a hot bat, something that you don't very often get to say about Ray Ordonez. His offense is not his strength, but he's. One ball, one strike. Shallow right field. Brian Jordan out there under it. He had him played very shallow, so he had to back up a step or two. Makes the catch one gone. And that'll bring up Bruce Chen. If you remember Bruce Chen when he was with the Braves, not that bad a hitter. And 140 for the year. That's about average for pitchers. No extra base hits yet. One ball, no strikes. Nothing, nothing game. Each team with one hit in the bottom of the third. Mets only hope really is to catch and pass both the Phillies and the Braves and win the division. As far as wild card hopes go, they're nine games behind the Cardinals, who have opened up a two and a half game lead in the wild card race now. So while the Mets are listed in the wild card standings, it would be next to impossible to pass five teams and win that. So their their sole hope of getting into postseason is to catch and pass first the Phillies and the Braves. Two and two on Chen. And what of the newspapers here did the mathematical equation that if they played at the same percentage rate over the rest of the season as they have the last 25 ball games, and if the Braves and the Phillies played at their same pace, they would win the division by one game. Two and two on Bruce Chen. Strikeout for Marquee. Two men gone. Pete, we want to remind the right fans to watch for the Braves on TBS baseball card scrolling across your screen later on in tonight's game. Call the 800 number there for your chance to win Braves merchandise and a shot at uh, maybe having a seat in the owner's box opening day next season down at Turner Field. Matt Lawton with two outs. He flied to left in the first inning. Ball no strikes to Lawton. Well, both of these young pitchers responding quite well so far to what is a very emotional and very difficult night, really, to play with full concentration on what you're doing. Almost every player on the Braves team today took some time to 
walk around the city just to get a sense of what they're going through here and every every player every member of the Braves traveling party to a man very moved by some of the things they saw. You can, you can read and you can watch TV and you, know, you can you can get a small feel for it, but until you're there, and it, only then does it become personalized. Marcus Giles on to Franco, and it's a one, two, three inning. So another solid inning for Marquis. Retired seven straight, still no score as we go to the fourth. Uh, have to be someone to play the while here. I have to think uh, Cleon Jones is one. Strawberry? No, strawberry would be two. How about Rusty? Stop my deep play here long enough to get a thousand? Yeah, probably. How about um, Gary How about Carter? Carter? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Julio Franco will lead it off for the Braves as we go to the top of the fourth inning. No score, the Braves and the Mets. Outside ball one. Well, Ralph, the ceremony before the ball game was really something else. And the Mets did a great job. Dave Howard and his crew here at Shea Stadium. And the big guy, Tim Dunkel, is about as creative as you can get, along with the video department, helped orchestrate. You hear the noise in the background. That's because New York's great leader, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, is going to leave the ballpark. And what a leader he is. Another standing ovation for Rudy, who doesn't get that here at Shea Stadium because of the fact he's a Yankee, out and out Yankee fan. He wanted to be a catcher. You know what? If he was a catcher, nobody would call pitches except him. He'd call the plays. There's a fly ball to right field. A lot in back, he makes the grab. One down. By the way, speaking of right fielder, huge flag out there in right field. And it was uh, the Budweiser sign and the Budweiser sign on the Shea Stadium main scoreboard has been replaced by the American flag as a gesture by Anheuser-Busch Inc. The St. Louis based brewer is replacing brand advertising on approximately 250. That's 250 outdoor billboards and stadium signs. And that's to express the pride and resolve the company feels in the wake of last week's tragedy. Big flag here at Chase Stadium has replaced the Budweiser sign. The Budweiser has replaced the sign with that flag. Chipper Jones, the batter, it's one and one on Jones. He's got 36 home runs this year. For a long time, Budweiser was the owner of the St. Louis Cardinals. Chopper up the middle. Ordonius had only one thing he could do because Chipper Jones can run, and Ordonius had to try to field it barehanded, unable to do so. So Chipper Jones is on first base with a single. Well, not much you can do about this. A soft little bouncer just over the glove of the pitcher. And Ray trying to make a bare hand grab, knowing he had no time at all. And couldn't find the handle. So Chipper Jones with good speed on first base. And Brian Jordan is the batter. Jordan fouls off the first pitch. He's missed a ceremony here at Chase Stadium. I'm telling you, Ralph. You had to have goosebumps during the ceremony. You're right about the production was just outstanding and not a thing went wrong. It was done so perfectly. Quite emotional. Rudy Giuliani came in the ballpark to a standing ovation. Swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes. All right here. Jim with a fastball and Jordan right to the ball, swinging right to it. So it's a baseball expression by players. Swung through the ball. Oh, and two on Brian Jordan. 
fouls the ball back. So we'll do it again. No balls and two strikes. Jordan's got some pop. He's got 20 home runs, 82 RBIs. One thing about Jordan, he's been hurt throughout his career, and he's a was a great football player. How can a football player play baseball? He's had hurt. injuries year after year after year. Now we know which is the real difficult, <laughs> tough sport to play. And you said that. I didn't say it. <laughs> Lock the door. He hurt his shoulders from football, and he's had operations he's on his had shoulders. He's had knees and yeah. bad legs and uh, everything. He used that football to negotiate some pretty good contracts in baseball. Certainly did. It was a threat to uh, go back and play pro ball. Defensive back that was drafted by the uh, by Buffalo. Bills. There's a drive to center field. Jay Payton is right there, two down. Well, I'd like to uh, welcome some people into the booth. Fire Captain Stagpole, Timothy Stagpole, who died saving others at the World Trade Center. He only returned to work six months ago. He was badly burned and almost died in 1998. Captain Stagpole had bought these tickets for tonight's ball game a few months ago and and wanted to bring the family out to Shea Stadium so I want to welcome his family here at the Mets Braves game and they've taken some time away from the wake and Captain Timothy Stagpole will be buried on Monday so we get some Met fans in the booth pulling against those Braves, right, guys? First time up here in the booth? Don't get too comfortable now. <laughs> we don't want to be giving up these headsets. Okay? Here, they have those Met uniforms on. They're ready to go. Ralph, these are the future Major League players, I got a feeling. All right, yeah. What do you think? We're going to get this guy a Met hat, though. The, the Giants, well, of course, their season. So he's got a Met cap. This is the best seat in the house up here. Don't be telling people that. These guys look too comfortable. The only thing you have to worry about are foul balls that come back here. And the first thing you learn, learn to do is duck under the table. <laughs> it's one ball and one strike, and Ken Caminetti, he hits a ground ball. It's fair ball down the right field line. And Chipper Jones is rounding third. They're sending on the throw to the peak. Piazza's glove and Chipper Jones scores. So the ball hits off Mike Piazza's glove and Jones scores the first run of the ball game. So it's one nothing in favor of the Braves. Well, the space hit here is what you call very fortuitous. It is off of the glove of Zeal and made a diving try and then the throw in by Alfonso. It was a perfect throw, but bounces a little too close to Piazza and bounces away and the run scores. Just a shade too close for Mike to get the glove in the right position to make the play. Well, there was going to be a heck of a collision right there. But it's one nothing in favor of the Braves. Andrew Jones is the batter. He takes a strike. Jones struck out his first time up in the Philadelphia Phillies series. Uh, Andrew Jones really struggling. He even dropped a fly ball in that series. Yeah. That's hard to believe. This is one of the great outfielders of all time. There's a ground ball to short or don't his gloves. And they get Andrew Jones, but the Braves got a run. They got a run on a double off the bat of Ken Caminetti. The Mets trail one nothing as we go to the bottom of the floor. Been doing it for years and has raised over a million dollars for the fund. And now working even harder and raising more money. It's a great cause and he is the guy that started it here in New York. Yeah, so that's Rusty Stobb and Rusty has worked 
morning, noon, and night, and unfortunately, people really need to Rusty and his foundation. So everybody's stepping up in New York. It's quite a feeling. Unfortunately, every time you get a high about the feeling of the the atmosphere, you think to the the tragic event of September 11th. Well, it's all in one on Fonzie. It's the fourth inning here at Shea Stadium. Big crowd on hand, big series. Somehow it doesn't seem as big. Fonzie hits a drive to center field. Andrew Jones, who can go get him with the best of them, makes the grab. Two men are out. Check that one out Fonzie flying to center field. By the way, we'd like to pass along. The Mets family would like to pass along condolences to Lou Rudin family. Lou, a well-known real estate man here in the New York area, a friend of yours, Ralph, and who passed away after an illness. And the Mets wanted us to pass along condolences from everybody out here at Shea Stadium. He was a great supporter of New York City. He just, uh, he, everything he did was for New York. Very close friend of a lot of friends of mine, and just a wonderful guy. And the worst golf swing I've ever saw. <laughs> well, again, our condolences to the Lou Rudin family. Amazing in a, in a period where the one of the landmarks here in New York is torn apart by terrorists. One of the leading builders of New York passes away. Lou swung on a miss. Mike Piazza, it's one ball and two strikes. Piazza will be followed by Robin Ventura. Missed outside, two balls and two strikes. If you went back and watched that throw from the outfield, from Fonzie to Mike Piazza. More and more catchers today, and I think it's wise, keep the mask on. Mike took the mask off, I believe, and sometimes you take that mask off. You can flinch when a ball bounces. But when I played Ralph, everybody took the mask off. Right, but I think nowadays the way they are crashing to the catcher their home play. There's a drive right center field. Extra bases for Piazza. He's on his way to second base with a double. Goes the other way and lines this ball into right center field. And it slides on by as the right fielder Brian Jordan goes down in the grass. And Piazza with the second double of the ball game, and he has the Mets two hits. Chance to tie the game now for Ventura, who struck out with Piazza on second, his first time up. Shea Stadium is starting to rock. It's been rocking from the ceremonies on. Outside to Ventura, one and all. Big crowd on hand, first of three against the Braves. The mayor of New York wanted the Mets to come back, play the games here. There was some talk about them going to Atlanta. Ventura takes up high, two and all. Once again, they made the right decision. There's it's pretty heartwarming to see fans are out here and watching baseball and the ceremonies were certainly inspiring. Piazza with the lead, the 2-0 pitch. Right drive, base hit right field. They're gonna hold Piazza at third. Throw comes in, Ventura dives back to first. So the Mets have runners on first and third with one man out. And let's get back to that Aflac trivia question. Robin Ventura became the fifth player to record his 1,000th RBI while playing for the Mets. Who are the other four? There they are. Henderson, Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter, and George Foster. Oh, so, I see. It was while playing for the Mets, not 
playing for the Mets. Wild and accumulating, play. yeah, wild playing there. Okay. Now look at the defense. As usual, big game here in New York. Electricity throughout the stadium. Shinjo. Takes down low, ball one. That was a good call by John Stearns holding Piazza up at third base because Brian Jordan made a perfect throw to the cutoff man and the throw was right on line to the catcher. One and all on Tiyoshi Shinjo. Fouled off, one ball, one strike. Buyers of the game tonight, Diana Ross was outstanding. So was Mark Anthony. see the ceremonies again just you give anybody born and brought up in this country goosebumps Shinjo it's a high fly ball and Jordan is under it Piazza tagging it goes Piazza this baby is all tied up with the run battered in on the sack fly and the Mets have tied the game. And now the batter would be Todd Zeal. He's been hot for the Mets. Two home runs in his last two ball games. Zeal lined out the first base his last time up. He'll be followed by Jay Payton. Two men are out. Zeal takes a strike. Looking on. Marquis' pitch is a strike, so it's 0 2 on Todd Zeal. Zeal disagrees with the home plate umpire Wally Bell. While they were certainly close, Ooh. both pitches in the same position, the same spot, and strike two. up on the signs Javi Lopez who has been tattooed by the pitching staff with the Braves as far as his catching is concerned went out to talk to Marquis. Jason Marquis born Manhasset New York. Good ball movement and Zeal hits right on top so it's it stays at no balls and two strikes. Three game series between the Braves and the Mets. If you just tuned in, we're in the fourth inning. They're all tied at one. The Phillies and the Marlins zip zip in the seventh inning at the bet. The one thing about that Marlins team is they can throw a pitcher out there that might give up 10 runs in the first inning but has the ability to shut you out for 10 innings. You just don't know what you're going to get when you face the Marlins. They're going to have a quite an impact in this race. And oh. the Phillies are going to have an impact in this race. They have the best schedule. Outside to zeal one ball and two strikes. We'll see what happens tonight. Phillies and the Marlins the Phillies winning three or four from the Braves. Can they have a letdown. We'll see. Base hit. Extra 
bases. Ventura will be held at third. Zeal in the second base with a stand-up double. Bobby Cox sends Leo Mazzoni to the mound. You want to get a perspective on what could happen this year. In 1964, the Cardinals, with 13 games to play, were in third place, like the Mets are. Six games back of the Phillies. The Mets are only five and a half back. The Cardinals won 10 of 13. The Phillies won 2 and 9. And the Cardinals won the National League Championship. Two of those three losses the Cardinals had were to the Mets. The last series of the year, the Mets won the first game, knocking Bob Gibson out of the box. They won the second game of Hal Jackson, pitching them 1 0 shutout. And then with Gibson coming in the ballgame in relief, the Cardinals won and won the National League Championship. Well, Jay Payton will take a strike. So it's all in one end. Payton, who's batting 2 5 1. He's got seven home runs, but lately he's back to swinging the bat. Ball starting to jump off his bat again. Pulls it to third. Caminetti, will he get him? Oh, what a play by King Caminetti. Outstanding play. By the veteran third baseman. But the Mets have tied it up. Look at that play again. We're all tied at one. The Braves and the Mets. But Mets donating salaries. I have a tremendous feeling of pride for what my guys have done. It makes me proud to be a member of this organization. Gotta really say that's true. From top to bottom in this organization. Front office, players, everybody. And if you want to help out, here it is, www.libertyunites.org. That's the umbrella website. And you can see the telephone numbers, National Disaster Relief Fund, 1 800 Help Now. We'll give you those numbers again. Javi Lopez is the batter. He swings to a breaking ball for strike. New York State World Trade Center Relief Fund 1-800-801-8092. The United Way September 11th Fund 212-251-4035. Or 1-800-710-8002. For more information on how to help, visit libertyunites.org. So Javi Lopez, the batter, 0-2 on Lopez. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Now Lopez should know Bruce Chin because Chin came up at the Braves. But Ralph, as a former catcher, I can tell you, has no effect. Well, the catcher calls the pitches, but the pitcher can throw him. And Lopez can hit him. Picks up a base hit leading off the fifth inning. Shortstop, number two, Ray Sanchez. Ray Sanchez will be the batter with Javi Lopez on first base. Boy, they've done a whale of a job here at Shea Stadium just a few days ago. Relief help. It was working out of Shea Stadium. The Mets did a terrific job with the relief help here at Shea Stadium. Applause for the whole Met organization. Kevin McCarthy, Susan Lucci. They did a great job here at Shea Stadium. Up high to Ray Sanchez. Sanchez not in a sacrifice situation here in the tie ball game of 1 1 at the ball game in the fifth inning because the pitcher is due up next. 1 0 oh and Sanchez. This could be 2 1. Six, four, three, double play. 
or Donius to Fonzie to Zeal. Well, a good pivot by Alfonso. Got a lot on the throw and the double play pulled up. The second one in this ball game by the Mets. Jason Marquis, the batter. Chin's pitch is a strike. So Bruce Chin has to be wired tonight, pitching against the organization that signed him. And also traded him. Right. They also took him through the minor leagues, helped him develop into a major leaguer. And then, obviously, lost confidence. Sent him to Philadelphia, and the Phillies sent him to New York. Well, they got a good pitcher for him. Yeah. They got Alan Ashley. Yeah. There's John. Bill Bartholomew right there. Bill, is, Bill owned the Braves and sold them to Ted Turner. He's still chairman of the company. He owned the Braves and they moved to Atlanta. He says he can never go, he can never go back to Milwaukee. Well, the Braves go back to their dugout, then to the field. The Mets are coming in. The Braves go down. They fail to score. We go. Folks, we, we, we'd like to remind you there's been a scheduling change as far as television is concerned. Tomorrow night's game will be televised on Channel 11. That's a night game here at Shea. The game was supposed to be on Fox Sports Net. On Sunday, you can catch all the action right back here on Fox Sports Net. And Geico Mets on Deck precedes that game on Sunday. So. That's a scheduling change. Tomorrow night, Channel 11, Sunday, Fox Sports Net. If you can't make it out to Shea, that's where you can see the games. Fouled off by Ray Ordonez. The Mets need a run to go ahead. They're all tied in one. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. They had a chance to go ahead, but Caminiti, the newly acquired third baseman, and was one time the MVP in the National League, made one of the great plays. To pick up the final out of the inning, last inning. Outside to Ray Ordonez, one ball and one strike. I'm sure when they picked up Caminetti, they had to talk to Chipper Jones because Caminetti was going to play third base when given an opportunity, and Chipper would have to move to another position. And he has tonight, he's in left field. Fouled off, so it's one and two on Ray Ordonez. And usually that means that. Uh, the player has to okay that, and a lot of players won't move. Now, Chipper Jones, basically an infielder, is now playing the outfield. Yeah. Kevin Eddy has been a third baseman all his life and was the, one of the greatest arms of any third baseman ever. Adonius fouls the ball off and out of play. So we'll do it again at one and two. Yeah, that's a tough thing. Uh, years ago, you'd have trouble getting the guy to give up his position. But take usually a pretty good sum of money to get him to move to another position. That's modern day. Modern day. Yeah, yes. the other years ago, they didn't do that. Well, they said you either move or we'll see you play somewhere else. That's right. <laughs> or don't use as a shortstop. He'll remain a shortstop. Did he check it? No, he didn't says Marty Foster, the first base umpire. Well, folks, you can be a part of tonight's America, a tribute to heroes, and help the families of the victims in the September 11th tragedy. Log on to outside. Log on to outside? No, no, log on to, let me spell it. Tribute to, to heroes.org or 1 866. Let's get the number again 1 to unite. That's 1 to unite. Tribute to heroes.org is the website. You can be part of tonight's America, a tribute to heroes. It certainly was quite a ceremony prior to the game tonight, orchestrated by the New York Mets. And a big guy, Tim Dunkel, was involved in the creative process. Here's the one-two pitch. That's where meetings for many days, planning tonight's fest, well, the ceremony tonight prior to the game. They had that many days, really. They no. were talking about playing the series in Atlanta, and then all of a sudden they said, no, it's going to be here. With Dave Howard and the crew here at Chase Stadium. 
because the Met players have been so involved. There's a drive to left field. Chipper Jones is there, makes the grab. So Chin's out, two down. Players wearing the hats first night in Pittsburgh when they went out for interceptions. Then they've been wearing the hats ever since during the game. Quite a turnout from the folks here in New York. Just to think, at one time, everybody thought we were going down to Atlanta to play these three games. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of New York, has done a great job in leading this city. He wanted the Mets back in town, so they're playing here tonight. There's a strike to Matt Lawton. 0-1 on the Mets right fielder. Still no score. The Marlins and the Phillies there in the eighth inning at the depth. Down low to Lawton. One ball and one strike. Lawton takes up high, so he's up on the count. Jason Marquis pitching a huge game for the Braves tonight. There's a line drive up the middle, base hit. So Lawton's on with two outs. And he can run. The second <laughs> the batter now with two men gone here at Shea Stadium, the fines. He's 0 for 2. The Mets had some thunder in Pittsburgh in their lineup. They had the home run ball going for them. high to Fonzie one ball and no strikes the Fonz has been swinging a pretty good bat lately Ralph he has been swinging much better than he did when he had the bad back he takes outside two and all you know one thing about watching hitters hit, you notice when they take a pitch, how they take the ball. And when they take it in hitting position without either breaking their back or moving their shoulders, you know they are really on the ball. And finds he's been doing that lately. And he picks up a base hit to left field. So the Mets have runners on first and second with two men out for the big guy. Mike Piazza. Piazza. Piazza in his first two times up, the pitch track. This is the first time, and he hits the pitch that's inside down the left field line for a double. They pitched him outside in the second at bat, and they doubled the right center field. So and where do they go now? Well, our friends at Oral Health America's National Spit Tobacco Education Program would like to remind you that smokeless does not mean harmless. Whoa. Or he had a pitch right there to hit and just was his shade behind it. 93 mile per hour fastball. Ball's out of way and he had a good swing, but not just a fraction behind that ball. Jay Stadium is jumping. Oh, and one on Piazza. Runners on first and second. Swung on and missed. Oh, and two. Right here, it's a hard slider breaking out over the outside part of the plate out of the strike zone. Very good pitch by Jason. 
big at bat for Piazza and the Mets. Fouls it back right below us. By the direction of the foul ball, it was straight back, so he had the ball timed perfectly and was just underneath it. So Marquis has been challenging. It's only two. Piazza with two at bats, two doubles, and he scored the only run of the game. The Mets and the Braves are tied at one. Down low. Will he challenge him with the heater again? between Lopez and Marquis. Lopez is going to wear the grass out going out to the mound. Well, if you weren't around for the ceremony, you get a chance to see it. It was a terrific ceremony here at Shea Stadium. And one of the things that happened on the field, prior to going back to their respective dugouts, the, Bretts, the, the Braves and the Mets met in the middle of the diamond, shaking hands and embracing. Quite a scene here, Che. Inside. Full count on Piazza. Well, that was almost like a prize fighter coming to the ring in the center and taking hands and then it was. In the battle. Seen, I've never seen it before. What, what a scene. People in this country coming together in all walks of life. And now it's a national pastime. Baseball. 3-2 pitch. Ground ball to third. Caminelli tags the runner Lawton, and that'll do it for the Mets. So, the scene here at Shea Stadium, in front of a big crowd. We played five. The Mets and the Braves in a big contest, and they're all I want to salute the video department here at Shea Stadium. Putting on quite a night using the video. And the diamond vision board foul out of play mentioned Tim Dunkel Jimmy Plummer Sheila Rehill Vito Vitiello Chris Granozio Joe Consoli congratulations on putting together quite a package for the pregame ceremony here's the 0-2 pitch to Giles up high one ball and two strikes Two pitch, the breaking ball misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Up high, three and two on Giles. Sixth inning. Well, it's three and two, so and a nice. big pitch there. Breaking ball, and Giles looking fastball goes after the pitch out of the strike zone, and he struck out. That was a big out there. So, one man out, Julio Franco will be the batter. He's 0 for 2 in this game. Franco will be followed by Chipper Jones, whose chin, and along with Jason Marquis, has pitched so far a very good ball game. The difference in this ball game has been the feeling of Caminetti at third base. He oh. turned this game around for the uh, Braves. Had a great play to keep the Mets from taking the lead at two to one, and then also got a good play off on Piazza. Run up there. And that's a good one. 
So it's a battle of the gloves here at Shea. Two down. Well, the reaction play right here by Bruce Chin as he takes the bouncing ball from Julio Franco. Picks up the second out, and now the man you have to watch. Larry Jones. Yeah, Ch Chipper Jones, you can't allow Chipper Jones to beat you. You pick out a guy on a team and you, and you neutralize him. Don't let him hit anything. He's the one guy that can go over that wall because he's done it this year 36 times. Not only this year against the Mets, every year he's ever played against Batting the Mets. He's killed. How about 300 average? How many years? Six years. Gets the ball toward the end of the bat. A lot of real estate out there. And Peyton makes the grab. So that'll do it for the Braves here in the sixth. And they go quietly. We're still tied 1-1 here at Shea Stadium as we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning and take a look at tonight's Wendy's leaderboard. Category this evening is records over the last 25 games in the Mets. 20 and 5 over the last 25. And you can see the Braves and Phillies both with losing records. And that's why the Mets find themselves only five and a half out of first entering play tonight. Robin Ventura leads off the bottom of the sixth. He's one for two. Mets have left four runners in the last two innings. Five overall. There's a strike. And the bottom of the sixth is underway. Ventura. Then Shinjo. Then Zeal. Popped up to shoot. Who wants it? Ken Caminiti has a bead on it. Back one step, makes the play, one out. So Ventura is gone. Shinjo the batter, he is struck out, and he has hit a sacrifice fly, driving in the only New York run of the night. Braves run scored on an error. Shinjo has 10 home runs. He's hit better, really, in the American big leagues than he did in Japan. I think his first homer was off Jason Marquis here earlier this year. Oh, and won the count. He is now one for three against him with that home run. On the outside corner, it's 0 and 2. Mets have six hits, Braves have four. Florida bats in the ninth, still scoreless for the Phillies. A ball and two strikes. It's like they've turned it over to the bullpens for both teams in that game. Dahl and Burnett leave throwing shutouts. You would think the advantage thus would swing to Florida, but we'll see. Line drive, base hit right field. Good job of hitting by Shinjo. He looked like he just stuck his bat out there to make sure he didn't strike out. It's like he was just going to try to fight that pitch off. Uh, chance for Zio. Watch this. He's way out in front. Body is over here. And he just slaps it there. So base it off the bat of Shinjo. Mets have a base runner with one out. Todd Zeal will be the bat. He had a home run in the last two games in Pittsburgh. They check Shinjo at first. Side to Zeal, one and all. Shinjo with the lead. Zeal takes a strike, so it's 
one ball, one strike, one out. Still a veteran ball player. He was looking curveball right there, a slider, and got the fastball. That made the hitters look curveball. Boy, if they look curveball, they'll be a good breaking ball hitter, and they're going to see a steady diet of fastballs. <laughs> a lot of broken bats. Hmm. A guy who played Ralph looked at the breaking ball from Nolan Ryan said he didn't want to be embarrassed by Nolan's breaking ball. He was swinging with the fastballs in the glove. And down low, two and one. It also takes a lot of guts. Oh boy, I'm <laughs> telling you. Wow. 100 mile an hour fastball and you're looking curve. Perez and Reed warming up in the bullpen. Neither one gets up there at 100 miles an hour. The marquee has shown real good stuff tonight. He's got that fastball up to about 94 miles an hour. Shinjo with the lead. Boy, right on the corner again. Oh, look at this pinpoint control now. You saw the catcher shift outside, and you think curveball there, but he threw a fastball. When they shift inside, It'd be a miracle if they threw a curveball. She's a home plate umpire, Wally Bell, pointing into the mid dugout. Somebody probably was all over Wally Bell. Once it wasn't Bobby Cox. He's been thrown out of 10 games so far this year. Well, Bobby is showing quite a temper this year. 2 2 pitch, pulled down the third baseline, foul, so we'll do it again at 2 and 2. He said, let the game begin, and the managers are getting all over the umpire. Now, that's our national pass. That's back to normal. Back right to there. normal. Marquis has thrown 97 pitches so far in this ball game. Oh, right off Marquis. Look at this. 6 4 3 double play. With an assist from one, and he's hurt. He is hurt. He took a bullet off his back, and the ball rolled to the shortstop, Sanchez. So scored one, six, four, three. And Marquis is hurt, but so is Zeal. He just lost the base hit. Look at that. Wow. That hurt. Except the result made him feel a lot better. We're all tied at one, and we'll be back. Well, back here at Shea Stadium on a gorgeous night for a game. Quite a ceremony before the game. Men should be very proud of themselves, all New Yorkers and the people in the United States with this ceremony tonight. As you look at our Toyota in-game box score, see Kim and Eddie one for two with a double. Chipper Jones has a hit in this game. You've got to keep Chipper away from hitting that long ball, but that's our Toyota in-game box score. It'll be Brian Jordan, Ken Caminetti, and Andrew Jones for the Braves. And back in with the play-by-play, -play, Howie Rose. Okay, Fran, Brian Jordan goes after the first pitch from Bruce Chin. No balls, one strike. Jordan, a couple of fly balls to center field in this game. It's about hit the Braves 7-4. to four, And the game is tied at 1. We hope you were able to see the pregame ceremonies mm. featuring Diana Ross singing God Bless America. One and one to Jordan, as well as Mark Anthony singing the Star Spangled Banner. They both did a great job, but uh, Diana Ross of God Bless America, boy, she had this place rocking. Mark Anthony did a great job. The whole ceremony is extremely impressive, and if you missed it, uh, I'm sure you can find it on the web. Two and one to Jordan. Just go to msgnetwork.com, and you'll be able to read part of what's gone on tonight here on. Very unique night oh. in the history of Shea Stadium. Boy, that was a Broadway production, wasn't it? Yeah, and the rehearsals were pretty good, too. Mm. Those of us who were here well before the game were treated to a couple of Diana Ross's rehearsals of God Bless America. It was supreme, to say mm. the least. Ventura. 
Cliff Jordan made good contact, but Ventura was there. One away, let's take a look at our New York Marriott Marquis pitching matchup. Good starts for both pitchers. Marquis throwing the ball very well. So is Chin. Good control, good velocity, good breaking balls, and as important, good defense behind him. Marquis helped himself out last inning. He took a ball off his back that had base hit written all over, and the ball rolled to Sanchez's shortstop, turned into a 1 6 4 3 double play. You wonder if he'll go back out there. Big cut by Caminetti. It's 0 and 2. Nobody in a bullpen, so Marquis must be okay. It reminded me of a play that affected the Mets indirectly back in 1984. Some of you had cable in those days. Picked up Cubs games, might remember it. Line to right field, the base hit for Caminetti. By the way, Howie, somebody is up in the bullpen. We can't see him from here, but our cameras will show you those guys in a moment. Well, Andrew Jones, Sir. the sixth batter in the lineup. Remlinger is the left-hander. Steve Reed, the right-hander as they work a little closer to the bottom of the order. But Fran, the play I'm talking about, as we see the pinch runner at first base, Caminetti, mm. leaving the ball game. He's been, he's been a big difference in his game with his glove. Jesse Garcia is the pinch runner at first. There was a play in 84 when the Mets were fighting the Cubs for first place. Pete Rose for the Reds. Line one right off the rear end of Lee Smith, and it rolled to Sandberg for the final out of the game. Mets and Cubs going neck and neck right around late August. You see plays like that, you start thinking certain things are meant to That's be, right. certain ones aren't. Mm -hmm. Well, the Mets had a break in Pittsburgh when Jay Payne hit the base with, with a ball and uh -huh. went on to score a run and get the Mets going when they were trailing 2 nothing in the final game of that series on Wednesday afternoon. One on Andrew Jones, nothing for two. Upstairs, one and oh. By the way, make sure to stay with us after the third out here at the top of the seventh. Liza Minnelli will sing New York, New York. I believe it was Liza's version that was recorded yes. before Frank Sinatra's more famous version. Absolutely. There's a story to that, too. A gentleman named Tommy Volando owned the music. And Liza Minnelli recorded it, and uh, Tommy Volando was a friend of Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra said, do you mind if I record that song? He said, go ahead. And he recorded the song, and when he heard it, he said, you recorded it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy told the story. Two and one to Andrew Jones. Well, Chin has been mixing it up, changing speeds. Look at this, way out in front. And Jones, we talked about him early. He struggled in Philadelphia. Couldn't make contact. Well, if you saw the pregame show, you heard some comments from Chen about just how important this start is for him. Really for a myriad of reasons, not the least of which is the Mets standing vis-a-vis -vis the Atlanta Braves right now. But of course the situation that is being highlighted, probably the wrong word to use, highlighted, but certainly being paid attention to tonight here at Shea Stadium, plus the fact he's Pitching against a team that brought him through their farm system and then gave up on him. He's had a lot running through his mind prior to this start. And he's held up beautifully to this point. He, he's pitched very, very well. So Rick White now throwing in the bullpen. But Chen has been extremely impressive. Along with Jason Marquis. Popped him up. Back behind first, Zeal calls. And that's the second out. Good job by Chen, because he was working Garcia real hard at first base. You get to hope that this guy stays cold, Andrew Jones. He's got 31 home runs and 90 RBIs, and even dropped the ball in the series in Philadelphia. By the way, speaking of Philadelphia, still no score. The Marlins and the Phillies at the bet. Talked about that ball club and that pitching staff. They can put a pitcher in the mound who can give up 10 runs in the first inning. Or he has the ability to shut you down for 12 innings. Lopez struck out, single to center. Oh, boy. Play by Zeal. That was an excellent play by Todd Zeal. That's one thing you don't want is to throw a ball away 
And Zeal going back to first base. It's an outstanding play to be going back and then have to dive for that ball. Garcia trying to peer around Zeal at first as Chen delivers the strike. It's 0 and 1. Garcia running for Caminetti on at first with two men away. A one to one game here in the seventh inning. Garcia's had quite a workout between Andrew Jones's at bat and now with Lopez. Chen is bared down. And Zeal. They've got him picked off the high throw, but Zeal gets it down to Ordonez. Oh! He was called safe at second base, and finds he had a shot at going after him again because he came off the base. And finds he didn't go after him. Mark Hirsch back to second base umpire said finds he missed him. Take a look at it. Todd Zeal moving into the infield, taking a high throw. The throw to finds he's offline, but finds he looked like he got his feet tied up and couldn't come back with the glove. Like Fonzie was expecting him to. Well, see, start his slide. What, well, you see what happened when Fonzie reached for the ball, it took him off the base and looked like his feet were tied up. Then he had to come back. Now, see, he had him right there, but he didn't go back after him. Did he tag him? Let's see. Now, he was safe. Now, watch him come off the base. He's got him right there, and Fonzie doesn't tag him. It looked like Fonzie was looking in his head to make sure he had the ball. You know, he. Well, it looked like his, his foot was on the base when Fonzie made contact with him, and then he went off the base. So one and one to Lopez with a go-ahead run now in scoring position. And it's sliced the other way, a foul ball, one and two. Well, you got Lopez batting, and you have Ray Sanchez on deck. Javi Lopez is a good hitter. He's having an off season. He's got 16 home runs. The 61 RBIs. I'd be very careful with him with first base open. And Ray Sanchez, who's never been much of an offensive threat on deck. The crowd into it. Chen trying to get out of it. Little pop up. Is there room for Zeal? Mm, nope. Yeah, Javi Lopez this year not having uh, the production that he's used to having as a hitter. And unfortunately, he's playing out his contract. He's, got, he's batting 261 with 16 home runs, 61 RBIs. You can usually count the him for about 25 dingers. Had one last night helping the Braves beat the Phillies. Here, the Braves and Mets are tied. So are the Phillies and Marlins. Gets tired of waiting. Slowly hit. Chin slow to get off the mound. He'll have to hold on to it. Mm. Although he does try and catch Garcia napping at third. But now the Braves have runners at the corners with two out. And we'll see what Bobby Valentine does here. He's had the right-hander White throw it. A right-hand hitter, Ray Sanchez, coming up. And here's a situation a situation with runners on first and third. As you look at that play again. Really don't play for Chin or for Ventura. If the Braves decide to put Javi Lopez in motion, rarely do the Mets throw through. But in this situation with Javi Lopez running, they might. And Bobby Cox, knowing that, might put a play on, activating both runners. Sanchez, not an RBI guy. And a chopper, Ordonez, strong throw, cut down. Chen gets out of it. The Braves leave two aboard. The game remains tied. And stick around because Liza Minnelli is about to deliver her rendition of New York, New York. There's Liza being escorted fittingly by a policeman on her right arm, a fireman on her left arm. 
And Liza Minnelli, who originally recorded the song that has become something of a local anthem. Frank Sinatra, of course, has the more Ladies widely circulated version. Seventh inning stretch. Uh, Liza Minnelli, with the seventh inning stretch, with the seventh Tonight, inning stretch about to begin. The city in the world. Set the to deliver New York, New York, New York. By one of the greatest entertainers of all time, Liza Minnelli. Miss Minnelli has invited some of tonight's honored guests to join her on the field. understand that and this place is rocking it started with the ceremony before the game and what a night here at Shea Stadium one to always remember as uplifting as a lot of the things are you think back to the 
tragic events of September 11th. Steve Reed will take over the pitching for the Atlanta Braves. Last pitch that Jason Marquis threw was lined off of him by Todd Zeal. It became a 1-6-4-3 double play. So we'll see if, if the ball hit by Zeal, knocking Marquis out of the game, we think, will help the Mets. Marquis was pitching an excellent ball game, and he was as tough as Bruce Jinn. So now we go, and it'll be a battle of the bullpens. Yeah, that's Wes Helms who's going to play third base now. Part now, of a double switch. Keep in mind, Caminetti has been superb defensively tonight. Caminetti made a great defensive play on Jay Payton earlier in the game. Jay's last time up. And he takes a strike from Reed. Bottom third of the Mets batting order. Payton, Ordonez, and Chen to do the hitting for New York. In Philadelphia, this just in. The Phillies have scored a run in the bottom of the ninth inning and defeated the Florida Marlins one to nothing. No balls, two strikes to Payton. So that means the Mets cannot gain ground on second place Philadelphia tonight. The Phillies four games ahead of the Mets. John Franco getting ready in the bullpen now for New York. And this puts additional pressure on the Braves who need to beat the Mets here to stay a game and a half in front of second place Philadelphia. So the Phillies applying some pressure. One and two to Payton. Well, I guarantee you all eyes in the Philadelphia clubhouse are on this game here in New York. Just like the other night in Pittsburgh after the game on Tuesday night, as you look at that score on the scoreboard here, Tuesday night in Pittsburgh, the Mets were watching the Philly game at the vet in Philadelphia when Scott Rowland won that game with a base hit. Fouled away by Peyton. Who could have imagined as recently as what August the 17th when the Mets were I believe it was 13 and a half games back that they would be playing significant pennant race baseball late in September. And here they are trailing by five and a half trying to pick up another one on the Braves and keep pace now with the Phillies. It's the first of six meetings between the Mets and Braves. Slider missed two and two. Let's have six with the Expos and three more with the Pirates. That's their 15 game remaining schedule. Bill McEwing perhaps will pinch hit here in the eighth, seventh inning. Joe with a bat on the top step. Pitcher due up third. Lifted to left. Chipper Jones over to the gap to make the catch. One away in the seventh frame. Let's look at the Toyota in-game box. And for the New York Mets, the box score is clean. Piazza, two for three. Ventura, one for three in his game. Zeal, one for three. Was robbed of a hit by Jason Marquis, the pitcher, when he backdoored him. They get the ball and take, he took it off the back and went to the shortstop of Ray Sanchez, and the Braves turned a double play. So now it's up to Ray Ordonez. Ray flied to right, struck out. Baseball taken high, 1 0. And it's Mark Johnson waiting on deck. That would be the kind of matchup Bobby Valentine would want against a side arming right hander like Reed. And the question becomes. Would Bobby Cox allow that matchup? Wouldn't think so. And Reed throws fastballs down. He tries to keep his breaking ball down. And Mark Johnson dominates the pitch down low. Left hander Mike Remlinger had been throwing earlier in the game. One ball, two strikes now to Ordonez. They tell right handers, hitting instructors will tell right handers when a right hander drops down like this, don't try to pull them. You'll tend to pull off the ball. If you can try to hit that ball back up the middle, go the other way. You'll stay with the ball longer. And Ray 
stays alive. Well, we'll see how the managerial wheels spin. Mark Johnson on deck. Remlinger throwing. It would still give Bobby Valentine the opportunity to go to a right-hander once Remlinger comes into the game. Perhaps that's why McEwing had been holding that bat around the top step of the dugout. Right now, it's Johnson in the on-deck circle, and perhaps McEwing to pick up for him. Ray fights it off, and they want to make sure it stays foul, and emphatically so. Steve Reed, he almost clocked Helms with that. Miss Helms taking over at third for Caminiti after Garcia ran for Ken Caminiti. Helms was splitting time at first base earlier this year with Rico Brony. Look at that ball running in and Ordonez hit on top of it. And it stays foul. Reed wanted to make sure it was going to stay foul. Helms found out somewhat painfully. Still the ball and two strikes on Ray. That's about hit Atlanta seven to six. We're in a one to one time here in the seventh inning. Outfield fairly shallow and around towards right. And it's Luke. Andrew Jones has time. The ball hung up. A couple of fly ball outs against Steve Reed. And now we'll see the wheels turn. And here comes Bobby Cox. He's going to go to the bullpen. He's not going to let Mark Johnson, with one swing of the bat, put the Mets ahead. So it looks like they'll bring in the southpaw Remlinger, and we'll see what Bobby Valentine does. So late in the game, managers are playing chess. Here comes deck at 12:30, and then Al Leiter and Tom Glavin hook up. Maddox and Trexel tomorrow night. And now the former Met Remlinger will take over the pitching for the Atlanta Braves and make his 72nd appearance and go after Joe McEwing. Two outs, nobody on. One to one game here in the seventh inning. Big cut by Joe, nothing and one. Well, Joe McEwing has done it all for the Mets. He's done it as a utility player. He can play every day. They take him off the bench as a pinch hitter. He's been spectacular. And the fastball, 0 and 2. Ooh, Rollinger has found new life in Atlanta. He's thrown the ball very well. Played his collegiate ball at Dartmouth College. So he came in the ball game and bounced the Dartmouth grad Mark Johnson into the dugout. Doesn't like those intramural matchups. <laughs> in fact, last night Remlinger gave up a home run to Pat Burrell of the Phillies, and that was the first home run that he'd given up since Desi Relaford of the Mets hit one back in late June here at Shea Stadium and tied the game in the ninth inning. It was the weekend the Braves traded John Rocker. Reed and Carse were just getting to New York. Remlinger started to work some save opportunities. Yeah. Blew that one. Little looper down the right field line, a foul ball. It sounded like Joe McEwing. Yep, I guess he did break his bat with that swing. Hit the ball off the end of the bat. Boy, they get that pine tar up there so high. I mean, it's a surprise they do. It's almost like it would retard the progress of the ball, but I guess it doesn't as McEwing way out in his front foot. He couldn't reach any further out there, could he? Hit the ball right off the end of the bat to stay alive. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Gets jammed there. And the pop up handled by Javi Lopez, and that retires the side. So the Mets go in order in Bobby Cox's order, and that the pitcher would bat in Ken Caminiti's fifth slot. But obviously, that turned out to be erroneous. And so it's Gilkey batting for the pitcher, Remlinger. 
Helms batting fifth instead. Oh, and one to Gilkey. Fastball taken high. Bernard went to spring training with his former team, the St. Louis Cardinals, this year. They released him. And then the Braves signed him to a minor league contract early in the season. In fact, when the Mets were playing the Braves here at Shea on the first homestand in April. His career year came as a New York Met back in 1996. Well, right after that, surprisingly, Bernard Gilkey, who was a hard worker, just lost it. At least playing to that level. It was like overnight, Howie. He had 30 homers, 117 RBIs, batting 317 in that career year. Far exceeding anything that he'd come close to doing before or since. Fouled away. One of the suspicions was that his eyes had deteriorated to a point where it affected him. And so he went to get the laser surgery, which has now become commonplace. He hasn't handled Franco well at all. But when Gilkey had the laser surgery, he did it in really one of the first waves of those mm. who elected that option. And he went out of the country to do it. He went to Calgary, in the province of Alberta in Canada, to have it done several years back. Got him. Uh, John Franco throwing that signature changeup. Gilkey's gone. One away. One thing that, that happens in baseball today, they, they have tremendous medical men in baseball. As you look at that last pitch to Bernard Gilkey, he just eats up hitters with that type of pitch. You can be a part of tonight's America, a tribute to heroes, and help the families of the victims of the September 11th tragedy. Log on to tributetoheroes.org or call 1-866-TO-UNITE. Make your donations now. Strike one on the outside corner to Marcus Childs is 0 for 2 with a walk. One and one. John has battled through some elbow difficulties recently, even after the game on Monday in Pittsburgh and elbow is still rather stiff and John's needed a couple of extra days to get ready that's line to right Lawton closing quickly and he makes the catch outstanding play by Matt Lawton two men away but that reminds me of the catch Ron Swoboda made in the World Series look at this play Balls hit hard, Lawton moving to his right rapidly in the dive. Outstanding play by Matt Lawton. And now there are two men out. Not too far from the spot where Ron Swoboda took one away from Brooks Robinson. Game four of the 1969 World Series. So now it's Julio Franco. Lined into that double play and then fly to right, grounded back to the box. And Franco misses outside, ball one. Franco's a lifetime 301 hitter in the major leagues. Breaking in back in 1982 with the Phillies. One ball, one strike. Always had that. Unorthodox stance at the plate with the hands held way up. Ten years ago, he led the American League in hitting with the same stance. So it's been effective for Franco. Batted 341 that year as a Texas Ranger. Played for Bobby Valentine. And look at the way he, he stands at the plate with his knees. He's afraid that he's going to open up too soon. That's why guys would do that. It's almost bowling. Yeah. Isn't it? You know, guys are so concerned with opening up too soon, they do anything to tie themselves up just a little bit longer. Look at that stance. Looks uncomfortable, doesn't it? But if you slow everything down, the good hitting instructors will show you that 
The hands go back in the hitting position. There's a stride. The hands that throw the bat through. Stance is just supposed to be for a comfortable position, but if that's comfortable. <laughs> well, we've seen some pretty awkward stances over the years. As you know, a lot of kids grow up imitating other hitters' stances. That'd be a little difficult to pull oh, off boy. and hit well. Look at the knees. He wants to make contact. Kneecap to kneecap. Ball four. Only the second walk given up by Mets pitching in this game. Marcus Giles, the first batter in the ball game, drew a walk. And now Julio Franco at first with two men away and Chipper Jones coming up. Let's take a look at where Chipper Jones ranks among the league leaders. Brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Ian Hintz going back to 95. You see Dante Bichette, and you get Chipper Jones right behind him. 1,215. That's going back to 95. You see Garrett Anderson and Roberto Alomar. So Julio Franco out of the ball game. And the pinch runner for the Atlanta Braves at first base, Corey Aldridge. And Aldridge gets back easily. And again, we talked about it earlier when Chipper Jones is at the plate. Just don't want him to beat you. So he's handled Franco well. Aldridge trying to get a read on him. Zeal staying in front of him. And Piazza reaches. One ball, no strikes to Chipper Jones. Well, it's a situation where if you walk him, you force the runner down to second base into scoring position. But you don't want this guy to get that ball up and over that wall and hit a tweener as you look at Armando Benitez in the bullpen. Brian Jordan, a right hand batter on deck. You got nothing, buddy. 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, it looks to me like John certainly doesn't want this guy to do any damage, and I don't blame him. You've got Armando Benitez throwing in the bullpen if, if he has to face Jordan. That's fine. It's the eighth inning, but he can do it. This guy's batting 319, 36, and 94. 101 are, are run scored. Nothing close yet. Yeah. I know it's a tough thing to do to put him to walk him intentionally. Well, in this case, it's intentional if you watch him on his fourth pitch. But take a chance with Jordan, the next hitter. I'm sure this has been discussed by the Mets in their clubhouse meetings not to let this guy beat him. Jordan, 0 for 5 against Benita. Should he get into the game? We'll see. But a line drive into center. So on 3 and 0, Chipper Jones. Shoots one through the middle, and now we'll see whether or not it's Franco or Benitez to face Brian Jordan. Well, that's probably a break for the Mets. I'm sure Bobby Cox was hoping a ball that would be hitting into the gap. Now, you take a look at our pitch tracks. One, two, and three are off the plate. Fourth one, not bad. The National Spit Tobacco Education Program and its chairman, Joe Garagiola, would like to remind you that smokeless does not mean harmless. Well, Charlie Huff talking to the bullpen. I'm sure Armando Benitez is ready. You get the big fellow who's overpowering. You got to go with your money, man. Mike Piazza is going to go out and get Benitez a little more time. I would be surprised if Bobby doesn't bring in Benitez in this situation. Well, if you believe in prior appearances, Jordan, a 308 hitter, four for 13 against Franco. While you mentioned against Benitez, Brian Jordan, 0 for 5. So I think this is Fran speculates perhaps a time by here Charlie Huff getting a pitch by pitch account from Randy Neiman in the bullpen it's you you know it's funny you, you read the body of work that he's uh, had against both, pit, both pitchers but you know you got an overpowering guy in the bullpen who's a uh, dominator and here comes Charlie Huff I got to believe they're going to go to the big guy in the bullpen if you're going to lose you're going to lose with your money man out of the bullpen John Franco has runners on first and second and John as, as we have seen, makes a lot of money on pitching out of the strike zone. He gets veteran hitters and rookies alike to chase bad balls out of the strike zone. But you get a guy, and you know, you mentioned how, he, how he's been nursing that sore elbow. So, Bobby Valentine's going to take all that into consideration along with the difference and stuff. With John Franco, finesse pitcher, but he's just a power pitcher. And a nice hand for Franco as he departs. Leaving two aboard in a tie game. 
defense and managing. A lot of moves late in the ball game. See Piazza with two doubles. Chin and Marquis pitched very well. Now it's up to the bullpen. It's going to be a battle of the bullpens and managers' moves. John Franklin a dugout. Armando Benitez on the mound. 68th appearance for Benitez. And, and, and third base is open and Helms is on deck. So you do have some room for error. Line to left center, and the Braves are going to take the lead. Here comes Aldridge in to score. To third goes Chipper Jones, in to second goes Jordan, and on the first pitch from Benitez, Brian Jordan, who had been 0 for 5 against Armando, delivers the go-ahead run for Atlanta. It's 2-1 to one Braves. First pitch, fastball, bang. Good hitting by Jordan. The ball was out over the plate. Jordan had a pitch he could wail on, and he did it. Hit it in the gap in left center field. One runs in, and then they hold Chipper Jones at third base, but that ball was hit very hard by Jordan, so Jordan's in second base. And Helms was going to be the batter. Well, now, Dave Martinez, a left-hand hitter, and of course, with the benches fortified by the September call-ups. It's a lot easier for managers to spin players. And so Dave Martinez will be written by Bobby Cox onto the lineup card. Of course, first base is open. Right-hand hitter Andrew Jones would follow Martinez. And so we'll see how Bobby Valentine plays it here. The pitch to the left-hand batter. Well, they take their chances with Andrew Jones, who's been held hitless tonight. Braves have taken the lead. Of course, Atlanta needs to win to stay a game and a half in front of the Phillies. And the Mets' margin for error is obviously close to nil. Lose a game to the Braves. Not only do you lose ground in the standings, you lose a date on the calendar, which at this juncture of the season is equally important. You got a left-handed hitter, you got a struggling right-handed hitter, but a good hitter when he's comfortable on deck. Well, at least for now, they go after Dave Martinez. And the veteran left-hand hitter takes outside ball one. You load up the bases, you have forces at all the bases. And Andrew Young, I should say Andrew Jones, has been struggling. You see the runners on third and second, Chipper Jones on third. Brian Jordan on second. One and one. And Fran, if there should be a ground ball in the hole where the only play for the Mets would be to first base, well, Dave Martinez can hardly run at all right now. He's had bone spurs under his right kneecap. Just watching some of the games between the Braves and Phillies earlier this week, it was very difficult for Martinez to run. What they're expecting from Martinez right here is a base hit into the outfield. Two and one. Bobby Cox sent Martinez to the plate because he's left-handed, hoping that he can drive in a run and add to the lead. It'd be a cushion in the ninth. Two in scoring position. Jones at third, Ryan Jordan at second. Three and one. has happened after two are out and nobody on. John Franco struck out Bernard Gilkey. Marcus Giles was robbed of a hit by Matt Lawton in right field. Well, that Julio Franco drew a walk. Chipper Jones singled him to second. Aldridge ran for Franco and Brian Jordan doubled him home. And here as we talked, Andrew Jones is a guy who's a good hitter throughout his young career. Right now, he is struggling. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He really hasn't had good swings. 
Of course, that baby can change in a heartbeat. He's had two for his last 18, including tonight. This should be easy for Peyton. And a huge out for Benitez. Yes, the Braves take the lead, but they also leave three aboard. So now the Mets will have to try and come from behind as Atlanta pulls it. Johnny Phelps at CNN Sports Illustrated. The Cardinals lead the National League wild card, and they won their eighth in a row, and here's how. Grand slam from Albert Pujols in the top of the ninth off of Omar Olivares, the first of his career. He has 35 home runs this year, 125 RBIs. That's a league rookie record. The major league rookie records, 145 by Ted Williams in 1939. I'd like to speak to you. Okay, Johnny, that kid's for real. That's at least five RBIs for him tonight. It's 125 for the year, as he said, and the way he's going, he may break Ted Williams' record. Keith Lockhart is at third. Dave Martinez stays in the game to play first, and Steve Parse is the new Atlanta pitcher as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Matt Lawton leads it off. He and Parse are no strangers to one another. They have battled in the American League for some years. A one run ball game. Atlanta has the lead. Strike called over the outside corner. 0 and 1. Lawton is 1 for 3. Breaking ball hit on the ground. Final it's 0 and 2. Probably see John Smoltz begin to get loose too. If Carsey's in the ball game, John's not far behind. There he is. Under the watchful eyes of bullpen coach Bobby Dews. Oh and two. Don't make a mistake with that breaking ball here. A ball and two strikes. Not many folks have left this ball game either. They've stayed around to root on their mitts. So much appreciated under the current circumstances. Breaking ball and it's two and two to lock. That's trying to get the leadoff man on here. They trail two to one as John Smoltz, the closer these days, gets sent for Atlanta. Lawton, Alfonso, and Piazza do up for New York here in the eighth inning. Arce, the fourth Atlanta pitcher. Ball three. So Lawton's climbed out of an 0-2 hole, and now he's worked the full count. Huge pitch coming up from Carse, who played his high school ball at Christ the King High School here in New York. Quite a sports program at that high school. Payoff pitch. Hit slowly. Tough play for Sanchez, but he gets it there. Yeah, that was a nice play by Sanchez. Nice play. He's been a shortstop. He's got some years on him now, and he fills in at shortstop. He's doing a nice job with the Braves. Ball hit to his right. And all he could do is throw off balance. See that short arm throw? Ball goes up by the ear, throws off balance. Look at it right there. Bang. It's the only way you can get a guy with good speed. Short arm. Bang. He's got him. One out, nobody on. And Alfonso has one out of three. This ball for a strike. That's off the outside corner, one and one. And Fonzie will hit the ball the other way. Andrew Jones, the center fielder, plays just about everyone to the opposite field. That means the corners can swing around too if necessary. And they can also cheat farther towards the line. 
one and two. I mean, you just think of the range that Andrew Jones has in center field that gives you so many options defensively on the corners as well. Oh, yeah, Andrew Jones with uh, excellent speed. Now, there's a good breaking ball, and Fonzie swinging right over the top. That's where they tell the pitcher they want to throw, that we want you to throw your breaking ball down and away. And Carse deals mm. just off the outside corner. Yeah, that was wow. a good Yeah, I'm telling you, you know, the, it's such a good pitch because he threw the curveball there, same height, and then he comes back with the fastball on that same plane the curveball started on, but it's a fastball this time. Tough to react, and Fonzie was lucky that was called the ball. So the count even. And the breaking ball pulled foul. It was an emotional night for Steve Carse as well as he, of course, born in Flushing. Bryce the King High School. So this is a return home for Steve Carse. Slider and the count's full. Well, they got Lawton three and two. Now it's Fonzie to Piazza. This is the formula right here. Bobby Valentine wants Alfonso and Piazza to hit in either the eighth or ninth inning. So now it'll be a payoff pitch. Mm. And he fights it off. Say getting that one up to 97. Well, they get some great young arms in baseball. I know pitching has been criticized. I'm not sure why, because you talk to the hitters today, and they'll tell you these kids can really throw. Slice foul. And Fonzie's had some uncomfortable swings, but he's staying alive. Take a look at Fonzie staying alive, but this is an uncomfortable swing. You see he's pulling off that ball, doing everything in his power to stay in and make contact. A Travolta swing. Staying alive. Andre Lopez wanted to make sure Fonzie was... <laughs> well, Carse is not I don't think is upset with that call as no, the one no. two pitch that we talked about he's not upset with that call that pitch there the, the down a little bit in the strike zone but as I mentioned it looked like Fonzie was uncomfortable against Carse now we're going to get a pinch runner does he run for taking in his pitch and Fonzie was able to check his swing Ralph was talking about it earlier when you're comfortable as a hitter as Ralph said when you take a pitch your hands are back in a hitting position they haven't collapsed Fonzie's had collapsed so Fonzie's at first now the odds is going to be the batter uncomfortable or not he still had a very effective at bat to work the walk out get Relaford into the game as the pinch runner and here's the man the Mets want up in this spot down a run late in the game Two doubles and three trips. Infield at double play depth. Didn't take long for Relaford to get the uniform dirty. Somewhat. Somewhere. Well, Javi Lopez has a good arm. He has struggled in throwing runners out. But you're not going to send Piazza. I mean, Relaford, are you going to walk Piazza? Ball, nothing in one. Marse <laughs> has seen Piazza four times previously. Mike one for four against him. Lopez wants it away. And it's hit deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run by Piazza. And 
and the Knicks lead three to two. since 1964. I don't know how this game or even this season is going to turn out. But that may rank among the handful of most memorable home runs in the history of this ballpark. Well, they had one night to forget as Ventura strikes out. And hopefully for a moment people were able to forget. And Mike Piazza Excited this crowd. They wanted to be excited tonight in the worst way. And Mike Piazza did it. It's been a terrific night starting with the ceremonies before the game. And Mike Piazza here in the eighth inning takes his pitch. And did he excite this crowd? Over the center field wall, they were ready to just jump and scream. And they got an opportunity. And why is baseball back? Why was it so important to give fans a few hours to forget about? Their troubles, those firefighters yep. smiling because of a baseball game in Flushing. And the big guy did it. One of the more dramatic swing have taken the lead. And, and what a fashion they did it. 41,235 fans. Are here at Shea Stadium. It's been really a, a, a you know, a emotional night for everybody. Starting with the ceremony before the game, and by the way, uh, Fox Sports Net covered that as good as anybody. Terrific production crew here at Shea Stadium. There was a big crowd on hand, and highly emotional ceremony before the game. And Mike Piazza in the eighth inning, it's a two-run home run to give. The Mets the lead. They need three outs to win this ball game to pick up a game on the Braves. And even before the ball game, the players were on the foul lines, and before they took the field and went back to respective dugouts, they shook hands, they embraced. It was just a highly emotional night here at Shea. Javi Lopez leads off the ninth and fouls one off, nothing and one. But of all the poignant scenes that we witnessed tonight, and everybody might have one of their own favorites. To this point, Mike Piazza has produced the one that will stand yeah. out, at least to this broadcaster, smiles on the faces of firefighters. Yeah, and, and, and he might be his most important home run. And he's hit a lot of them. It may have been the power of Piazza that drove the ball over the fence. It's the power of baseball and sports in this country that produce those smiles. No balls, two strikes. Here in New York was here for a little while tonight. Quite a reception for the mayor, Rudy Giuliani. He's done a magnificent job of leading this great city. 
So Benitez ahead of Javi Lopez. One and two. And just think about some important pitches that have been thrown in somewhat understated circumstances over the last 15 minutes. You have Benitez getting Andrew Jones to fly out, leave the bases loaded, and Carse not getting the call on that one-two pitch to Piazza. That's pulled through the hole. And Lopez is aboard representing the tying run with his third hit of the game. Carse, in fact, I believe was thrown out of the game between innings as he barked at home plate up Wally Bell and then Bobby Cox came on to take up the cause. Well, Lopez steps up and pops that ball to left field. It's ball hard in the hole. So now they pinch run for Lopez and DJ Surhoff is going to be the hitter. Mark DeRosa, Fran, will run at first base for Lopez. So Benitez has his work cut out for him, but he's one of the most dominant pitchers in the game today. It's up to Armando Benitez to close it out. D.J. Serhoff, also from this area, coming from a ride. Runner goes on the first pitch, and, and Serhoff fouls it out. Piazza got the worst of it. Well, they're going to test Mike Piazza's throwing arm. Mike Piazza took it right off the left arm. Coming out of that shoot, it happened so often. That hit off his glove, too. Just take another look. Runner in motion, the foul tip. So hit and run. Bobby Cox aggressively is starting to move here in the ninth inning. Bobby would rely more on the hit and run than the stolen base. DJ Surhoff, along with the Braves, bust up from Philadelphia after last night's game. Said what he saw on television did not do justice to what the image of lower Manhattan was for him and it's especially significant to him because he knows to this point he has lost at least one good friend. Mm. Hope you caught that in our pregame show. B.J. Surhoff, one of many players giving their thoughts and emotions at this most emotional time in the history of this country. Mets trying to provide what would be within the context of baseball a very emotional win and creep a game closer. They hold on here. They'd be four and a half out five in the loss column. Four behind the Philadelphia Phillies who won their game tonight one to nothing against Florida. Philadelphia four ahead of New York in the loss column. Oh and two now to Sir Hall. Well, you know when he throws overpowering fastball slider and a splitter the splitter occasionally he'll bounce it. It's Keith Lockhart on deck. Serhoff is 0 for 3 against Armando Benitez. Infield set up for two. Turr drops a couple of steps back of the bag at third. And Piazza keeps it in front of him. Good play by Mike. Yeah, you can't be afraid to call that pitch. Because Armando Benitez likes to throw it. And there it is, the splitter that's bounced, but Mike kept the ball in front of him. When you call that pitch, you see, it used to be only the breaking ball. You would think, okay, I'm calling it over the top curveball. More than one you have to block it, but with the introduction of the split finger fastball, you got to be ready to block that one. Because the good one is down low and a lot of times bounces. So DeRosa getting an instant workout coming on to run for Javi Lopez. In the air back behind third room for whom no one. Chinjo, Ventura, and Ordonez all gave chase. After Serhoff, 
Keith Lockhart and then Marcus Giles. Pitcher's spot comes up after Giles, second in the batting order for the Atlanta Braves. And Itaz ready. Got him. One man away in the ninth. One out. Here's Keith Lockhart. Dying at the plate, boy. That thing was going down and hard. That's one where you're just overmatched. He made a perfect pitch. Yeah, he did make. He, he was in a perfect location. He was ahead in the count. You've got to widen your strike zone. As I said, tough spot for BJ there. Lockhart, the batter. Marcus Giles on deck. Ventura fairly close to the bag. He's not guarding the line at third base, but a lot of room between Ventura and Ordonez. Lockhart at 229, three homers, 11 runs driven in. Oh, and one. Like a breaking ball, like he a did. slider. And not that good a one either. Uh -huh. above the belt but he lived to tell about it. Oh and two. There's the splitter. Down and in working on a guy that's pretty much a pull hitter in Keith Lockhart. Looks like he's getting a pitch that he can pull and all of a sudden it's sinking under his bat. game as you might expect is Mike Piazza who came through again for the New York Mets this time in the eighth inning with a one out two run homer off Steve Carse his 34th homer of the year his 83rd and 84th RBIs and on a night when baseball came back to the Big Apple a big hit for Mike Piazza the biggest star on this New York Mets team congratulations to him we'll be back to Shea Stadium to wrap things up right after this. Well, the New York Mets come off the deck and win it tonight. First meeting of this three-game series, and the Mets continue their hot ways. They've now won 21 of their last 26 ball games. They're within four and a half games of the Braves, and with the loss, the Braves now have their lead shortened to a half game as the Phillies rallied and won in the bottom of the ninth in Philadelphia. There are your line scores. The Braves left seven. The Mets left five. Armando Benitez has got the win despite giving up a hit that cost the Mets the lead or the tie in the eighth inning when the Braves took the lead but he gets the win six and three Carse gave up the home run to Mike Piazza he falls to three and four as an Atlanta Brave and as we told you the Braves lead down to a half game and Atlanta now one and four on this road trip skip yeah and the Braves can ill afford that you know and you brought up a good point about it just might be New York tonight and maybe it was but the Braves can't think like that now they've got two more big games here and then three more against the Mets in Atlanta so well, it's kind of like that in Philadelphia. The emotions were running so high, nobody really knew what to expect uh, emotion-wise and what would happen to them as professionals, how long it would take to get the competitive juices flowing. Well, with so much going on here in New York tonight, you, you had the same feeling. You knew that this was going to be a very high-energy night, and with professional sports returning, professional baseball here at Shea Stadium returning to New York, you knew that the fans would be 
really into this, and they were, and Mike Piazza certainly provided the excitement. Don't forget, Steve Traxel will pitch for the Mets tomorrow night, and Greg Maddox for the Braves, and it'll be on Turner South, and we'll have it for you at 7 o'clock. The first pitch is scheduled to go at around 7.10, and then on Sunday at 1 o'clock on Turner Sports, the final game of the series, a battle of left-handers. Tom Glavin will work against Al Leiter in that one. Meanwhile, the Phillies play the sagging Florida Marlins. They barely beat them tonight, but it doesn't matter whether you beat them 15 to nothing or 1 to nothing, which was the final score. They move back to within a half game of the Braves. They trail by one game on the all-important loss side, and the Mets trail by five on that loss side. But with five games remaining against the Mets and three more against the Phillies, both those teams certainly are within striking distance. A big crowd here tonight. I think that was a very happy surprise. And let's uh, let's send it, before we talk about that, let's send it down to the field where Craig Sager is standing by with tonight's hero. Craig. Well, Mike, it began with a heart-rendering memorial, ended with a heart-pounding salute. Any way in words you can put what it was like for you. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, just obviously this night was so much emotion and uh, uh, a class ceremony on the field before the game as the Braves, you know, the organization that they are showed a tremendous amount of class. Um, and it's, you know, again, you know, it's baseball. It's not life or death. And what we just came here tonight was just to, to remember the people who lost their lives and, and the people that live every day to try to protect us. And uh, like as the president said last night, it, you know, it's, a, it's not going to be easy, but uh, the way just this country has come together, we know uh, we've got a lot of good in this country. You've been so close to the situation. What was it like to bring cheers to New York? Yeah, it feels great. But, it, you know, I, many times before, I can't stress how important our team has been. And for the last 25 games away, we've just not given up and obviously scratched and claws and clawed our way back, uh, you know, back into this thing. So where it goes from here, I don't know. Well, congratulations. Thank Skip you. Gary says take tomorrow off. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Greg, thank you very much. I don't think he's going to do that. By the way, that crowd I was talking about, 41,235. For the latest scores, in-depth analysis at CNNSI.com, Sports Illustrated at CNN Speed. Our next Braves telecast tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern on... New York was home for Franco, who grew up in the Marlboro Housing Projects, just minutes from Coney Island. He learned about the game on this field from his father and the man the field is now named after, family friend Gus Loria. Brooklyn's Lafayette High School, the same school that produced Mets owner Fred Wilpon and Hall of Fame pitcher Sandy Koufax, was where John began to develop into a promising young pitcher. From there, he went on to St. John's University, then to the majors for what's been a long and fruitful career. Recently, Franco's journey came full circle as the single-A Brooklyn Cyclones helped the borough of Brooklyn honor their hometown hero on John Franco night at Keyspan Stadium in Coney Island. John Franco's from the neighborhood. He grew up right down the block on some of the uh, uh, tenement buildings here and apartment houses and Johnny deserves to be recognized in his own community as, as one of the good guys in baseball, one of the guys who's made it all the way. On hand to help celebrate the evening were a number of John's family and friends, including older brother Jim, who's watched his little brother make the move from Brooklyn to the majors. To me, it, it's a nice little thing they've done. It uh, shows a little respect that he's you know, putting in his time and putting in the effort. It shows he's accepted here that people like what they see, um, that he's given him a lot of thrills, you know, through his 18 years in the big leagues. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice, nice gesture on both the Cyclones part and everybody involved to put it together because this is really an outstanding place to be. It's a, it's a great place to go to a ball game. Um, and everything that basically the night is all about is just for him. I mean, it, it's a great honor to see uh, him being honored by not only the Met organization, but by the Cyclone organization as well. It was a night for John to reflect upon the road he's traveled and those who made it possible. There are a couple of gentlemen here who are wearing sanitation shirts. The Palmer Sanitation is where my father uh, worked for a, a long time. I'm sorry I get emotional, but uh, he'd be proud of me standing up here today. Uh, like Jenny said, there were a lot of people that doubted me, and my father always believed in me. 
And when you see me wear that orange shirt underneath my uniform, that's for my father. Because he believed in me and I believe in him. Last but not least, I'd just like to thank the Cyclone organization, uh, the New York Men organization for keeping me here for, Jesus, since forever. Uh, but I've been home, I've, I'm going to finish my career here, God willing, get into the Hall of Fame, and hopefully one day come back and coach or manage or do something in the organization to help the Mets stay on top and be the number one team in this city. Thank you very much. All in all, it was a memorable night in Brooklyn for a hometown boy. September 11th, however, have put everything in perspective. Baseball is just a game, but it is a part of us, part of our lives and part of the fabric of this great country. So when baseball returned to New York last Friday night, it was more than just a game, at least for one night. It was this great city bowing, we will go on. The Mets organization put on a stirring and heartfelt pregame ceremony. The stadium was a sea of patriotism from the giant American flag that adorned the outside of Shea to the ribbons and flags on display inside. An emotional tribute presented by the New York Police Department bagpipers and a stirring rendition of God Bless America by superstar Diana Ross highlighted the program. When it was time to play, it was the Mets that did the tribute by again wearing the hats of the organizations that were so devastated by the tragedy and simply by taking the field to play baseball. I just hope we can, we can put a little smile on the people's faces that have been hurt by this for at least you know, take their mind off it for three hours and uh, be able to help out in any possible way we can. I, I think that's the least we could do. I, and I think it shows uh, the people in, in the community here that, that, uh, that we have you know, a tremendous amount of care and heart uh, in this team and, and we really want to help any way we can. And, and that was the first step of what we all thought was the best thing to do. It's just a small thing that we can do. I mean, uh, you know, you, you can't do enough, you can't say enough. There's, there's, there's nothing really that you can do to make this right. But, uh, you know, the, 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 this whole city has been great in uh, coming together to, you know, to, to provide support and relief and uh, do everything they can. And, uh, you know, this is just something that's, that's small that we can do. But if, if everybody, you know, can do something little like this, then it, it'll just make it, make, make the, the process of the, everything and everybody's going through just make it that much easier for them to, to deal with. In this difficult time, we have all looked deep inside ourselves to try and help our nation. These emotions are what have driven the members of the Mets to do whatever they can to help heal the wounds of this tragedy in any way they can. This included the entire team and staff donating their salaries from last Friday's game to benefit the victims of the World Trade Center attack. I felt that uh, me, along with other teammates, felt it was important that we put our money where our mouth was. And Friday night against the Braves, we're playing for the families that were inflicted. It's a good feeling that we've done a lot of things as a team and as a group, and it's it's really meant a lot to each of the guys. And I think there's a certain uh, bond that everybody on the team now has just by going through this and, and being able to do things as a group. I think most of us are really uh, moved by the, the way New York and uh, the people that we've been able to talk to directly have come together and encourage us to get back on the field, um, that it might be a way for us to, you know, get people's minds off this for a few minutes, bring New Yorkers a little bit tighter, have them, you know, have something to uh, look forward to and, 
um, I think that has been very fulfilling for us as a, as a collective unit to be able to, you know, have some direct impact. Yesterday, Lenny Harris also picked up a base hit, pinch hit number 148 in his career as he moves ever closer to the top spot, currently occupied by Manny Mota. Earlier in this year, Smokey Burgess was passed by Lenny. Smokey, who was born Forrest Harold Burgess, played from 1949 to 1967 with five teams in the major leagues, including both editions in Chicago. He ended his career with Pittsburgh, played in the 1960 World Series with the Pirates as they beat the Yankees. Moda, meanwhile, holds the mark, 150 hits. He played from 1962 to 1982 with four clubs, mostly with Los Angeles, ended his career with a 304 average. And Moda with 150 hits, and uh, on that base hit on that particular day, passed Smokey into first place. And it is Smokey that Lenny Harris passed earlier, and Manny Moda that Lenny's trying to track down. This was career hit on the pinch hit side, number 148 yesterday. And so Harris just two away. He's the most among active players. John Vanderwall is next. Lenny clearly is aware of how close he is to history. Definitely. It's on my mind because the guys around the locker room, like Piazza, always let me know, man. You know, it's like, when are you going to break the record and this and that and that. So uh, I've been taking a lot of pressure. And um, I talked to um, Andre Dawson a couple of days ago, and he told me that, you know, you're pressing a lot. You know, go up there and be patient. You know, get you some pitches that you can, you know, get a hold of. And um, lately I've been doing it, and I'm just I'm right on track. Yeah, there was a period there where Lenny just could not get a hit as a pinch hitter. Struggled big time as he tried to move a little closer to Manny Mota. But now the stroke is back a little bit. Pinch hitting is a difficult business. We talked to some of Lenny's teammates who have pinch hit just about how hard it is. It was funny. We were in San Diego where um, Tony Gwynn was out early uh, doing early hitting. And he's been doing a lot of pinch hitting for the first time in his career. And he was talking about it, how frustrating it can be only getting that one at bat and uh, you know going home either you know really happy or totally bummed out uh, because you've only got that one about the show for the day. I think uh, anytime you come to the bands, uh, especially with the cold weather or when hot day, you know it's kind of a little hard to pinch it. Me as I play every day um, when I got day off and they need me at the end of the game I try to get loose most as I can and, and still you know stiff but uh, I think those guys really have um, uh, been doing a great job and especially Lenny, you know, he's uh, about to uh, tie the record, and, and uh, I think it's not easy to do. I think it's a lot of a lot of work, a lot of uh, mentally prepared for that. And you know, he, if he tied the record, he should break it, and uh, I think he deserved to do, to do that, to doing that.